IAR systems specialize in internet security. We know our systems are vulnerable, but as consumers, we welcome Wi-Fi enabled products into our homes to run the heating, program the dishwasher, control our cars. And as the web opens more doors into our homes, our companies and our infrastructure, the regulation lags far behind. IAR systems say we're simply not taking this seriously. I'm Andrew Wilson and I'm here in Davos to talk to them about the trust or lack of it in cyberspace. Hey, Richard, thanks for coming in. Good to talk to you. First of all, give me a brief overview of IAR. IAR Systems has been around for 40 years and we uh, uh, provide the tools and the solutions to secure and develop embedded applications uh, in anything that you know requires a, a semiconductor. So there might be 500 semiconductors in a car uh, that's programmed with our tools. Uh, we, we believe that or we think that uh, you or any individual interact with a system uh, that's been programmed with our stuff at least 30 times a day. You were recently part of a joint statement of support on consumer IoT device security. Is that right? Tell me a bit about that. Yes, we've uh, been supporting announcements from the World Economic Forum uh, around the requirements for hygiene in IoT devices and the need to move from an Internet of Things to an Internet of Trust. And that really requires five key requirements. These are coming through into legislation around the world, but really are in their gestation phases. There are things like proper identity, making sure that every device is truly unique. Uh, ensuring that vulnerabilities are reported properly so people are aware when their systems have issues. And of course, following that up, ensuring that updates uh, can be applied to everything. And beyond that, there are questions around privacy. How do we deal with privacy in a hyper-connected world? And the communications which obviously underpin those as well. We all understand the idea of hacking and malware and viruses and so on. Most of us just hope for the best, on a corporate scale as well as an individual scale. How misguided is that, do you think? I think ultimately it's very misguided. Hope is not really an option in this domain. We need to have proper legislation, proper implementation to ensure that all of the individual systems that we rely on are secure. This has to be part of everything that we do, uh, protecting the intellectual property, protecting and avoiding cloning and counterfeiting, which is a $500 billion a year industry. And it's endemic. And we have to build better systems which are built on trust uh, and avoid uh, some of the catastrophes which ultimately could occur if we don't secure the systems properly. Such as? Well, we see it all the time with uh, connected vehicles, uh, critical national infrastructure, so water treatment plants, uh, transportation systems. Everything has electronics in it today, practically, and all of those systems are open to use and abuse, and how we manage that is, is critical. It's the embodiment of our systems. We've seen hacks in the Americas where over $400 million worth of electricity was stolen because the systems simply weren't secured properly. Well, you're, you're a big player in the embedded security uh, software and uh, devices uh, in all sorts of systems. I mean, what's your experience of the security marketplace? At the moment, it's highly fragmented and People are doing a lot of what we would call homebrew, trying to find ways to meet the emerging legislation. So we have to have better tools, better platforms for achieving this in the same way that we uh, consume water, consume electricity. Most people don't even think about that. We have to be able to consume security and trust. And so there is a change in the way that security needs to be applied to devices, there needs to be these standards which are coming through and standard technologies. And at IAR, we already work with a huge range of the industry around development of embedded and IoT systems. And what we want to do is to bring security directly 
enter that flow, ensuring that security is there from the birth of the device and not added on. But that's down to the producer, isn't it? That's down to the retailer selling the kind of kit, the kettle now that will work on the Wi-Fi system and so on. You're saying there's no reassurance that the kit people are buying to use in their, their home Wi-Fi systems or that companies are buying to use in their, their, their office systems carry any kind of guarantee? That's correct. There is a real gap uh, there around how people understand security. And especially around consumer electronics or lightweight uh, industrial, there's always a race to the bottom around cost. And we can't expect the consumers to understand what's secure or what's not secure. They're going to be guided by price. We've worked with people like the British Retail Consortium to understand what is required. And it basically comes back to labelling schemes in the same way that for... Uh, windows, there are certain uh, badges, the kite mark in the UK, that we use to show that it's met criteria. We have to do the same with our electronics. We have to show that it's met legislation. We are starting to see that uh, in places like the UK. We have the PSTI legislation, the Product Security and Telecoms Infrastructure Bill. And this applies fines similar to GDPR. A 10 million pound fine or 4% of global revenue. And this is to enable people to start focusing on it in the same way as we have with GDPR legislation. So that's the, that's the, the wider envelope of legislation. Where does IAR fit into that? It has always been a trend in technology that, that um, unfortunately we in the technology industry tend to try to complicate things. Um, you know, whether there is an issue, uh, uh, immediately you will find, uh, which I would call the complexity kings entering, uh, entering the, the conversation. And we need to make security simple. It need to be very simple. You know, if you are to produce 10 million smart locks, you know, in production, the security need to be there, injected there at production. Asking the consumer to apply the security as an afterthought um, uh, will, will inevitably uh, create attack surfaces all over the place uh, because not all consumers are that savvy. Did you say attack surfaces? Yes. What does that mean? So the attack surface is realistically where the bad actor can start to probe, to find weaknesses. Uh, in the systems and quite often there may be the majority of the system which is very secure but there may be one aspect which has been brought in which doesn't have the same level of security and as Richard says it is very complex but it shouldn't be and it doesn't have to be we have to make security simple and consumable by every organization and we do that by breaking it down, making sure that every node, every moat in the system can be secured. Uh, because even with secure communications, if the platform has been compromised, then it's rubbish in, rubbish out. So briefly, what sort of conversations are you having with clients? Presumably some of them will say, yes, you know, whatever you can do, we want to talk about it. Presumably there are others then who've got their, their heads buried in the sand and are just hoping for the best, as we said before. Yeah, but at the same time, I think there's been a trend change over the course of the last four years only. Um, very much driven by the fact that there have been some highly you know, profiled and published security breaches um, happening uh, in terms of ransomware and other stuff. Uh, there has been cases in the US, there's been cases um, in the US with independent software vendors that has had, have had global impact um, in terms of um, you know bad entities injecting um, bad bad components into the software, um, so so the whole notion of cybersecurity has taken a broader perspective, broader spectrum than historically we talked about, as you mentioned, antivirus, network protection, and and the realization that is that you need to have uh, that that protection, but you also need to make sure that you know what's in your software, so-called the software bill of material. Uh, if one of your developers downloads some free stuff and just put it in there, that free stuff might be the attack vector. Uh, and, and again, also, there's been some published cases where, um, for instance, when you 
try and test the security of the power grid, basically in any given country. Um, I think what hit in the figure was like 25% of all the entry, potential entry points were totally insecure. Briefly then, gentlemen, are you putting your fingers in the dike as they burst or are you quite optimistic about the future? We will continue to see compromises moving forward based on existing solutions because we can't simply replace all of the electronics in the world around us today. But I think we are confident that we can move past that quite rapidly. And I think the key thing for that is that people are starting to understand that security is not a cost. Security is a value in the system. It uh, protects the brand, it protects the customers, but most importantly, it also protects the surf, uh, service which has been run on top of that. And that is where more and more revenue has been generated. That protection of the service and the capabilities means that security moves from being a cost, an afterthought, something which people try to avoid, to actually being far earlier in the conversation. And for that, security really does have to become so, so that there is a vested interest. You asked about the dialogues we have with customers. And, and uh, absolutely, the, the, the aspects that Hayden talks to is, is there. But there is also the bigger picture of protecting your intellectual property. If you've spent R&D dollars and, or pounds or whatever, and, and building something uh, that you then want to sell to customers and monetize, you don't want to see that being ripped off by someone else that you know, comes out with a clone, slightly differently named, 20% um, cheaper because they didn't spend the 50 cent on security. Uh, and you as a consumer will have a hard time to see the differences. So piracy and counterfeiting of intellectual property is another aspect and, um, and the customers we talk to equally have started to see that as an equal important aspect of security, not only the, the, the potential bad guys um, intruding, but also the potential bad guys actually just ripping you off. Richard and Hayden, thanks very much indeed. You're welcome. Thank you.